Sequels can be hard to get right. There's no looking around that. Coming up with new ideas that flow well with the themes and narrative of a story can be difficult to do, especially if they're in an entirely separate story from the first. Just look at Fooly Cooly Season 2, an entirely new story that uses old tropes from the first season and retreads the same themes in a totally uninspired fashion. But this video is about Snafu Season 2, which isn't an entirely new story. It's just the continuation of a pretty great first season. Speaking of, go check out my video about why Season 1 is so misunderstood if you haven't already. Like, seriously, the things I talk about in this video will have to do heavily with what I talked about in that one. So, go watch it and come back to this later. Please? Anyway, Snafu 2 suffers from the same problems that Log Horizon 2 suffered from. Inconsistency. Funny that they both kinda shit the bed around the same time. Consistency is what makes or breaks a sequel. Consistent character motivations, character progression, character personality, themes, tone, narrative through line that the writer set up in his own goddamn story. Season 2 is guilty of failing all of this, and it literally backstabs Season 1 in its first minute. Remember when Hikigai is on the school roof and proves Yukino's philosophy about unifying a group against one enemy to be correct? You'd remember if you watched my other video. You should also remember I said that Hikigaya also proved something. It's when he says this bullshit. No. Fuck you. Up until this point, Hikigaya has always been a realist. It was an important part of his character. He never tried to make excuses for anything around him, and he always said things like they were. When he first helps Yui, he comments on the fact that not everyone can achieve their dreams, no matter how hard they try, but you can find comfort in knowing you gave 100% towards that goal, and it'd be a foolish ideal to think otherwise. Even when he would outright lie to people about things, he would still recognize that what he was saying wasn't true. When Yukino first meets him, she says that he's probably a pervert just because that's what most guys think about, and to save face, he says that he isn't, but seconds later admits to himself that that's almost all he thinks about. It's an aspect of his character that makes him seem like an asshole, but he's incredibly honest with himself. Saying he created a world where nobody gets hurt is him being fucking delusional. Not only does he personally hurt the festival chairman, he debatably hurts Hayama, he hurts himself, and he hurts those around him who hate seeing him in pain. Later in episode 8, it has to be explained to him that he has to live in a world where he hurts the people he's close to, whether he means to or not, but in season 1, he more than likely would have accepted that concept without being told. In season 1, for the most part, every scenario is used to challenge and criticize how immaturely Hikigaya thinks and acts. Sometimes his plans would work out, but at the same time disprove his ideologies in the long run. In season 2, however, there really isn't anything to challenge, as there are no new ideas presented. In the situation with Tobei and Ebina, Hikigaya is burdened with the decision to let Tobei get rejected or keep his circle of friends intact. The way he goes about it is fine, but there's no idea introduced beforehand for Hikigaya's actions to challenge. The first season's formula was simple, but it worked well. The show doesn't even directly challenge any of the ideals Hikigaya himself previously put out. It's almost like it's just retconning aspects of his character to make him seem more like a bad guy. In episode 3, Hikigaya gets railed after his underhanded solutions to fix people's problems work. Yukino especially finds it disheartening because she assumed he was above lying to fix issues presented to them, but Hikigaya has shown before that he's not above that. In season 1, he says that lying is all part of being an adult, and that he couldn't care less about lying to people. But now, everyone criticizes him for doing things underhandedly, even though it got the best results. Even in his inner monologue, he questions whether he made the best decision, but in season 1, Hikigaya wouldn't have gotten so bent out of shape about it. He loses a lot of the bravado and confidence he had in his ideas before. In season 1, whatever ideals Hikigaya presented, he always did so with confidence because he figured he was right, even though his thought process was challenged by others. Now he's very unsure of himself, which is fine. Losing confidence in yourself can be a part of life sometimes. What doesn't make sense is how his methods aren't being challenged by reason or logic. It's just characters telling him that they don't like the way he's doing something and him reconsidering his actions. It's one thing to contradict a character's beliefs with one of your own. It's another thing to just tell them you don't like it for whatever reason without providing a sound, logical argument against their actions. That was what the first season did with mostly everything, but season 2 falls short of doing that. 
and watching Hikigaya be unsure of himself because of the people around him isn't developing his character, it's tearing it apart. Developing a character means that they recognize their flaws and work to fix them, but Hikigaya never saw his flaws as something that needed to be changed. You have to change that mindset that he already established if you want him to grow as a character, but they didn't. A lot of his ideals were based on his loneliness, but not all of them. Make him grow closer to people and you fix his isolation issues. Seems easy. But he was also an individualist as well, so when he values his flaws as a person, he's valuing his individualism. But now he feels like his methods before were wrong. But for what purpose? Nothing happens that should make him feel that way, and it all just comes out of nowhere. He really just has the fight taken out of him for a lot of this season. Yukino suffers from that as well. Hikigai and Yukino were always lively characters. They were loners, but they were never afraid to speak their mind. And you get small glimpses of that every so often in season 2, but it's very apparent that the show shifted from a philosophical character thought approach to a psychological one. Instead of the characters talking about their ideals in certain situations and then carrying them out in action, it puts more of a focus on all of them pussyfooting around their feelings instead of talking it out, just like real teenagers. And judging by how the first season handled itself in a very self-aware manner, I can't say they did it poorly? The melodrama is only intensified by Hikigaya's constant inner monologues about whether he's right or wrong about the psychology behind people, and other characters in turn analyzing him, and that whole approach makes the show feel very bloated. Following all the characters' thought processes behind whether they were right or wrong about something and being unsure about their own feelings is a chore to follow through. Now, don't get me wrong. For all the shit I give it, there are still some aspects of season 2 that I like. Hayama gets a lot more screen time and firmly establishes himself as a good foil to Hikigaya. We get to see him have moments of weakness and depth to his character. The scene in episode 11 where he tells Hikigaya he feels inferior to him but strives to be his equal is a character moment that comes as a nice surprise. Yukino's sister Haruno is also a nice surprise throughout the season. She's only interested in people who are strong enough to do things on their own, unlike Yukino and Hayama, which is why she doesn't bother interacting with them unless she has to, or to get a reaction out of Hikigaya. I personally just like to see her fucking with people, it's really funny. When all the characters aren't being melodramatic messes, which is most of the season, there are some really fun moments, but that's all they are. Fun. All the intellectual value of the first season just wasn't carried over. And I don't think that devalues the first season in any way. If it did, then you'd have to make the same case for a lot of other shows, such as the aforementioned Log Horizon. All it means is that the second half of the series leaves something to be desired, and for me, I'm okay with that. If you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification icon to stay up to date with all the new stuff I put out. Share the video and go follow me on Twitter. Love and peace, everyone.